Hi, and welcome to High School Physics Explained, uh, where I go through um, HSE revision questions from the New South Wales uh, in Australia uh, questions. Uh, and I'm particularly going to be looking at question 24 of the 2015 HSE paper. In this particular question, we are interested in uh, understanding how electrons behave in cathode ray tubes. And for those who are familiar with the New South Wales syllabus, it deals with ideas to implementation, and in particular, the first section on cathode rays. And you start off with this question. It's a seven mark question and three parts, A, B, and C. And we start off here with a diagram. And it's a, in many respects, it's a familiar diagram. However, the diagram has some flaws in it. And your question is here, explain why the representation of the path of the electron between the deflection plates is inaccurate. Now, it's worth three marks and it asks for explain. So it's not just uh, good enough to go through and identify a number of uh, inaccuracies. Um, and in fact, there are three inaccuracies. So we need to identify those inaccuracies and we need to explain why that is, why they're incorrect. So let's start off here. We've got a heating filament here. Electrons are emitted from the cathode. They're accelerated by the anode and then they enter this field here, which the minus and positive tells us straight away is an electric field. Now, as you know, electric field will, uh, are um, basically will, uh, a charged particle will experience a force in that electric field and it's a uniform electric field. So what are the areas that uh, are the flaws? Well, the first is the really obvious one. We have an electron moving towards the negative plate. And so one of the things you could state in this case is that the electron, number one, okay, uh, is that the electron cannot actually move uh, in the upward direction because explanation is is because they're attracted towards the positive plate and not to the negative plate. So there's the first one. The electrons should be deflected in a downward direction due to the plate charges. What's the second error? Well, secondly, it's entering the field and it's not experiencing a force until halfway. And really, the electric field is constant right throughout this whole section. So if it's going to experience a force in this case, downward force, it should start experiencing that force even before it actually enters the plate, as there is already an electric field just beyond here. And so the, f the second example is that the electron should actually be deflected from the beginning of the plate because, again, explanation, the fact is that it will experience a force as soon as it enters the field. So that's, a, that's the error number two. Number three is that we have a straight line deflection over here. And that is incorrect as well. And so as an electron enters the field, it experiences a force, which means it will start to accelerate. And if it starts to accelerate, its displacement will be ever increasing in the vertical direction. And thereby, it would actually be deflected downwards from this particular point and lastly in a curve because it is accelerating in the downward direction. So if I were to draw, although this question is not asking us, but if I were to draw what this particle will do is it will start to move down and would start to curve a downward like so. So there you go, three marks, identify at least two uh, examples of errors here, but most importantly, explain why they are incorrect. Let's jump to question part B. And in this case, it says, ask to calculate the force um, due on this electron due to the electric field. Well, how do you work out that? Well, really, you need two important formulas. The first, of course, is that we don't have a value for electric field, but we do have the voltage and we do have the charge separation. So we can work out the electric field by the formula V equals ED, which means E clearly can be determined as simply as the voltage divided by the distance. And that gives us 5000 divided by 2 by 10 to the negative 2 meters and as a result that can be determined equaling 250,000 volts per meter. Now that we've got the electric field 
we can now determine the force. And the next formula, of course, is F is equal to EQ, which basically means E, we just determined, as 250,000. The charge, of course, is the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 by 10 to the negative 19 Coulomb. And as a result, when you calculate that out, you'll get 4 by 10 to the power of negative 14 newtons. Now, that's basically all you need to do. But of course, we should know, of course, that that force will be in the downward direction. It doesn't say that there you need the actual direction, but it's always nice because of F is a vector, to notify which direction that that force is applied. It's important too that in my case, that you, uh, for New South Wales syllabus, uh, that you substitute correctly first in a correct equation and then continue on. Uh, that way, at least an entry level mark being substituting into a correct equation means you automatically get a mark here, even though you may not necessarily get this part correct over here. So now let's have a look at C. It says calculate the velocity of the electron as it reaches the anode. Well, really, this is actually an example of some kinematic motion. That is, in the vertical direction, my electron had a velocity u equaling zero. And we need to determine the final velocity, which we don't know. But we do know a number of other things. We do know the separation, and in this case, the charge separation, we're going to assume what they're meaning is R, which is 0.02 meters, or the two centimeters value. And the acceleration, of course, can be determined. The acceleration is the force that we just calculated out divided by the mass, and in this case is the mass of the electron. Now you notice now I've got U, V, R, and A, and automatically, I can actually determine the velocity by using a formula V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AR. But before we continue that, let's work out A first. And of course, F, we just determined the previous question, which is 4 by 10 to the power of negative 14. The mass of the electron is, of course, 9.1 by 10 to the power of negative 31. And when we calculate that out, we get the acceleration of our electron as 4.4 by 10 to the power of 16 meters per second squared. So now we can work at V squared. V squared, of course, therefore is that. And so we get that is equal to 2 by 10 to the power. Uh, sorry, my mistake. So now we can work out V squared. And simply V is now the square root of all this. Now U, of course, is 0. So we can automatically make that 0 plus 2 by acceleration, which we just determined down here, 4.4 by 10 to the power of 16. And of course, R is 0.02. When we calculate that out, we get 4.19 by 10 to the power of 7 meters per second. It's important to note that I know that this is, is a, a value that's quite high, but you do note that this value is definitely less than the value of C. So we're not in the right position of uh, making up questions which are inconsistent with <laughs> laws of physics. So in other words, if you keep your thinking caps on and work out the velocity and you get a value that is larger than the speed of light, chances are you've made a mistake. So the fact is that, that this is less and is consistent with the approximate uh, uh, velocities of electrons in cathode rays. This seems a quite uh, uh, probable answer. Again, set things out nice and clearly, makes it a lot easier to get the two marks. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, shows you how to do question 24. Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned to the next video. Thanks. Bye for now.